In this video, I'll be teaching you how to create flat characters using basic shapes on Adobe Illustrator. Hang around till the end of the video for a bonus texturing tip to bring your flat illustrations to life. Hello there fellow designers on planet earth, hope your day is going very well, I'm Rupin from Jammed and today we'll be doing some flat characters on Adobe Illustrator. If you're new to this channel, here I do a variety of design content for new and intermediate level designers jammed in a short amount of time in order not to bore the crap out of you. If you like this video, please make sure to check out my channel for more. Just a small disclaimer before the tutorial begins, this might not be a beginner friendly tutorial, however if the video is a little bit fast for you, make sure to pause whenever you need to. Start by creating a document size that suits you and tag along. Before you begin drawing anything, make sure that you have a small color palette to work with. Understanding color is crucial in illustration and design generally. I will make sure to cover color theory in future videos, however in this video we will be using color.adobe.com website to get our color palette. To use color adobe, simply search for the mood you want to set off. Or you can explore colors from other people's work, and you can easily copy hex codes and add them to your artboard. You will find the buttons that I'm pressing on the bottom left corner of the screen in case you need to know what hotkeys I'm pressing. Okay, once you have a sufficient amount of colors to work with, you can now finally start drawing. Remember, we are using basic shapes mainly. To access them, you can find them here in the toolbar. If you hold on the shape that has a drop bar menu, you can access the different shapes. Start by making a rounded rectangle and by tapping the A key you can access the direct selection tool and by clicking and dragging on these corner widgets, round off the rectangle. Now make the eyeball using the circle tool. Make sure it's aligned to the center and by clicking I you can access the eyedropper tool and tap on your color palette so it can give it the fill color of your choice. Copy the circle using Ctrl or Command C and paste it in front using Ctrl or Command F change its color and using the direct select tool select the bottom anchor point separately and delete it so you can have an eyelid shape. If your shape remains open make sure to click on the unite in the pathfinder window and it will fill the path. Add a square over the eyelid to add more detail to it and using the shape builder tool hold alt or option and remove the excess parts. Without holding alt you can merge shapes by dragging over them. Choose the darkest color in your color palette and add a nice stroke effect to your shapes. You can increase the strokes width either through the properties menu or the strokes panel. Now make the pupil using the circle tool and send it to the back either using the hotkey, control, command, shift and tap the square brackets or by right clicking the object, arrange, move back. Now you have an idea about the basics of the illustration techniques that I'm using today. It's only a matter of moving shapes around, back and forth, scaling and coloring. Proceed by making the mouth and the nose. To make triangles, get to the polygon or the star tool and use the up or down arrows on your keyboard so you can control the number of sides. So press arrow down till you get 3 sides and make a triangle. Make sure to hold shift to keep it straight. Now you can make the teeth. Get the triangles smaller using shift to fit inside the mouth area and snap them at the top. Then duplicate it to the side holding Alt or Option and then repeat the action using Ctrl or Command D to form multiple teeth. Now group the teeth together by pressing Ctrl or Command G and center them with the mouth and duplicate them again and move them towards the bottom. Great, now you have a mouth. Keep on building shapes as you imagine the character, add ears, pants, legs, etc. using the same techniques that we just described. You can also draw custom shapes using the pen tool. Access it by pressing P. Using the pen tool you can click and create anchor points wherever you need to. Create half the shape of the hat, duplicate it holding Alt, right click it, choose transform, reflect, vertical and apply it. To merge both of the shapes together, use the pathfinder unite option or use the shape builder tool, as you like. Now you have a symmetrical hat. Proceed to add more details to the character wherever you need to to make it more interesting, however, don't lose the bigger picture. Once you're happy with the amount of detail on the character, let's add some lovely shading to it and bring it to life. There's something about shading that makes any illustration much more interesting to look at because it has a realistic touch to it, even though we're making some weird one-eyed minion with no hands. Now copy everything that you've just created to the side and select everything and go to object expand appearance and then one more time expand. Now there are no strokes anymore. They're all individual shapes that can be separated. 
To start shading, grab the pen tool and start drawing shapes where you want to be darker. And make sure that you go across the entire shape that you want to shade. Now I'm going to choose a darker shade of yellow. And then select the shapes you want to shade using the direct select tool and using the shape builder tool, hold alt and remove it. But now you'll end up with this ugly problem. With the stroke being underneath. Don't worry. First you need to select the object you're shading and in this case it's the hat and ungroup the elements holding ctrl shift and g. Now when you click on the strokes you can bring them to the front. This is basically how we're gonna be shading the rest of the character. It's all a matter of moving things back and forth, rearranging. It will take you some time to get used to but trust me it's not that complicated. Now I'm gonna add the trendy stroke highlight effect. To make it, create a circle and delete the anchor points and leave two only. You can add anchors on the circle using the pen tool if you want a smaller highlight. And delete the rest. Give it a thick stroke weight and a bright color. Now we're done with the shading. I've promised to show you how to add texture on your illustration. Copy your illustration one last time to apply textures to it. Before you proceed, head on to my Gumroad and download my free texture pack for Adobe Illustrator. You'll find the link in the description. Now when you open it, you'll have a few textures to play with. I will let you know in my future tutorials how to make your own textures in Illustrator. For now, we'll copy this one and paste it over the other document. Make it smaller, give it a color that we want to be shading with, and in order to apply it properly, we'll be using clipping masks. A clipping mask basically shows the effect of the shapes within a certain area. To make clipping masks, first copy the shape you want to clip, paste it in front, and make sure the object you want inside the clipping mask which in this case is a texture, is at the very back of the artboard. Now select both the texture and the object we just pasted in front, right click it and create clipping mask. Using the direct selection tool you can move the shapes around inside the clipping mask and even duplicate them. Try around different textures and different positions. This comes with trial and error. Trust your judgment. Now you are finally done. Here's a bonus tip for you. If you want to change the colors of your artwork, you can do that by going to edit, edit colors, recolor with preset, color harmony, and then choose all and color harmony inside and then go to edit on top and here you can control all the colors on the artboard. What I like to do is simply lock all colors together and try out different color combinations. That's it for this video, I really appreciate you hanging around till the end of it, it really means a lot to me. If you enjoyed this video or found it valuable, please hit the like button and share this video with other friends who would find it useful. Also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you wouldn't miss future jam content and I would love to hear from you. Is there something specific that you've learned from this video? Also let me know what else would you like to see in the future, anyhow I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.